Bebop and Rocksteady are the two dangerously incompetent mutant henchmen created by the Shredder to be a constant thorn in the side of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But when we first meet Beebs and The Rock, they're regular people. Well, not regular, they live in a subterranean doom base running felonious errands for a man in stab armor. Similarly, it's clear that they too have put a lot of thought into their outfits. Especially Bebop, he's got a whole thing going on. But then we see the Shredder hire these two street thugs for an important mission, at which point he douses them in radioactive juice and stolen zoo animals to turn them into monsters. When we see them next, they're in their respective warthog and rhinoceros forms, and Shredder introduces them as Bebop and Rocksteady. Now, those two guys were not named Bebop and Rocksteady when they were just normal gang violencing human beings. They were probably Craig and Jeff or something. You know, regular person names. Bebop and Rocksteady are two fairly obscure forms of jazz and ska, respectively. Only a hardcore fan or a student of music theory would even recognize those words, let alone use them to name two burly werebeasts. So who did? Possibility one! Shredder named them. Shredder runs a pretty tight ship. He keeps Bebop, Rocksteady, and the rest of their friends, associates, Prime people in a single rumpus room in the Technodrome with the goddamn Lost Boys. The rest of his staff are literal robots. So he's not a man that likes to give up control of any aspect of his empire. So it seems like he would have been the one to name his new pet monsters Bebop and Rocksteady. That means Shredder would have to be a pretty big music nerd, right? He must have a room in the Technodrome that's just nothing but racks of vinyl LPs. Maybe he writes his own zine and hangs around Manhattan, passing them out after shows. Maybe he's in a jazz quintet. I don't know. Shredder was big in the underground music scene in 1980s Manhattan in this scenario. And when his two henchmen climb out of their monster vats, dripping with radioactive possibility, Shredder was waiting there with a couple of towels and told them, Okay, you guys are called Bebop and Rock City now. I don't care which one is which. Possibility 2! Bebop and Rock City named themselves. Maybe Shredder workshopped those names with Bebop and Rock City before making a decision, and invited them to sit down for a quick lunch to decide what they wanted to be called now that they're giant, unemployable monsters. Seriously, he makes a joke about how ruined their lives are gonna be by this process, so the least he could do would be let them pick their own names. Of course, you may have a little trouble getting a date on Saturday night. Now, did they try a bunch of other names in that hypothetical meeting before landing on Bebop and Rock City? Or did they just kick open the door to Shredder's office and tell him, look, we're Bebop and Rock City now, and if you've got a problem with that, you can get f***ed. But if that's the case, how did these two bozos land on words from the history of music theory? This is where it starts to get really interesting. First, a little background. New York City was considered at one time to be the jazz capital of the world by jazz musicians. Jazz at Lincoln Center, a concert venue arm at the legendary Lincoln Center Performing Arts in Manhattan, which contains David Geffen Hall, where the London Philharmonic plays, the Metropolitan Opera House, and the Juilliard School, first began as a summer concert series in 1987. And that first season of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles takes place in Manhattan in 1987. So maybe Bebop caught one of those concerts and decided that he really liked jazz. And when the time came to pick a monster, name, he settled on Bebop, this new and exciting music he just discovered, in honor of this new and exciting stage of his life as a giant mutant pig. And Rock said he was clearly into the punk scene, so maybe he was also a big fan of First Wave Ska, just naturally discovered Rocksteady on his own. But Bebop and Rocksteady could be failed conservatory students. Maybe both these dudes were only working for Shredder so that they could pay for their tuition at the Manhattan School of Music. Jazz is one of their specialties. Or maybe Bebop wanted to get into Juilliard. According to the census, the average income of a single male in 1987 was about $17,000. And tuition to either of those schools would have been a third of that. So maybe they're just criming to make ends meet. Here's what I think. Bebop and Rocksteady were both B-Boys, members of street dancing crews that showed up in New York City in the 1970s. Remember Breakin' and the internet's favorite lazy punchline, Breakin' 2 Electric Boogaloo? Those are movies about B-Boys. Oh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's and Breakin'. Unrelated. Anyway, Breaking, and not breakdancing as it's incorrectly called, has a lot of elements of jazz dancing, and some break beats sample jazz music, hence Bebop. And there was a b-boy crew called the Rocksteady Crew that had a branch that operated in Manhattan through the early 80s, hence Rocksteady. When the Rocksteady Crew disbanded in the mid-80s, Bebop and Rocksteady started working for the Shredder, but they never forgot their b-boy roots, and they picked their respective names as tribute. The reason they don't bust sick-ass flares and freezes while fighting Ninja Turtles is because they lost a ton of speed and agility being transformed into giant animals. Also, they clearly let themselves go a little bit once they started dragging knuckles for the shred dude. Possibility three! They're all just club kids, and those are their club names. So maybe Bebop, Rocksteady, and the Shredder all met at a Michael Oleg party at Tunnel. Shredder does look like he put his outfit together after eating a lunchbox full of ketamine. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please uh, click like, go down and uh, subscribe, and uh, go down to the comments and write a, a paragraph of prose about your own imagined backstory for one of your favorite Ninja Turtles characters. Like, uh, what's Leatherhead's deal? Was he a Cajun dude or was he an alligator first? Or did they just kind of collide in a happy accident? What about, uh, what about General Trag? He's a big dude made of rock. School must have been tough for him, right? Or Krang. God, how'd he make it through high school?